Hey guys, sorry here, back with another bricklaying vlog. Uh, just finishing off this little panel, it was a little Friday job for me. Um, was going to actually go on to a squint panel after this, but uh, I decided with a bit of rain that was in the air, you could see it was raining through finishing these last couple of course, and I was feeling a bit tired. I didn't fancy getting another pack of bricks and starting to build the squint, because for the sake of what it was, I was just feeling tired and I fancied an early day for once. Because when I'm normally working on my own, I tend to work past four o'clock. I've worked up until like five, six o'clock before and when I've been working completely solo. Because I don't like to work, uh, make my dad work longer than like half three. So if I'm working on my own, I tend to just take my time. I take extra time jointing up, you know, tidying up, making sure all the tools are in good nick. Uh, but it turned out, I got a phone call moving to a different site on Monday, on Tuesday, because it's a bank holiday. And uh, got a garage to build from slab, a couple of little cut ups. Uh, I don't know what they entail, what just a few, just a few little jobs. Uh, don't sound more like more than a week or two, a week or so's work, maybe a week or two, depending on what 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 I've got going. So hopefully I get some more garage footage and. Uh, the site I'm going to, I think, uses perforated bricks, so I get to go back on the nice square bricks. Uh, my preference, uh, the only reason I've been calling these videos heritage style or heritage is just because of the frog aspect of the brick and on this current site we're on. It's a red row site and they call these houses new heritage, so heritage doesn't fit in of a name. And uh, the bricks I'm, I'm laying at the moment. They're, uh, they look like a new Cavendish style brick from Ibstock, but they're actually a, a Nutthurst by like a German company by, called Weinberger or something like that. So basically a new Cavendish brick. And any guys who've used the new Cavendish or Western Western Reds or uh, Leicester Reds, they're all similar sort of types of bricks to lay, all of a frog, all in the traditional style. They're a pretty, tr uh, pretty shallow frog, so they do lend themselves well to pick and dip, but uh, I prefer the deeper frogs myself because there's more for the more area for the tr more to travel, so there's less restraint. So um, hopefully next week, if I get on this garage as intended, uh, I'll be able to get a bit more footage. Um, and I'm not quite sure whether I'll be building it with profiles or without. I'm going to take two profiles on the day, and. I'll, I'll decide how the garage is laid out, whether I'm gonna do like a two profile setup with a rack back, or I might even do a three profile setup using my six foot level to tail out to. Um, because I don't, it only needs to be level at one side, I might just clamp the six foot level on and uh, use that as a, you know, running out point. Not 100% sure yet. Uh, I don't like to speculate uh, before I've actually got on site and uh, start building it because it can sound amazing over the phone um any bricklayer knows that, that when you move to another site it sounds amazing until you get there something's in your way something's uh, stopping you so that's my idea i'll see what's happening the temperature can massively depend on how i build like today it's a bit of wetness in these bricks so managed to join up at the end after running these like 80 bricks in in this rack back uh so it was it was easy enough, but sometimes you might lay like five, ten bricks, and you'll need jointing straight away, or else you get to the to the end of the build or the end of the um, you know running in your section. All the joints have gone white, dusty, just don't give it a nice effect. As you can see, the brickwork below this. Obviously, I built all this wall. The brickwork below doesn't look as good at all, and the reason why is because I was laying it in really, really hot weather. The mortar was going off as well. The mortar was like the end of the silo and uh, you can see it's just got that dry horrible like smudgy effect to it and it's not because I've smudged the brick it's just because uh, the way it's, it's it's not had time to cure the mortar's not had time to cure and it hasn't adhered as well to the brick so probably slightly weaker than obviously if you laid it with a bit of moisture a bit of rain in the air helps brick work to be honest so if I was going to build an house for myself I'd like to build the majority of it when it was cooler weather so it gives the, you know, gives the mortar a chance to cure, go off, and uh, adhere nicely to the brick. So, 
finishing off this last course here, doing all this off the milk crate, pick and dip, uh, as I always do running in. Um, I've noticed people mentioning the joints aren't full and stuff like this. And, uh, you know, I've mentioned this last few videos about the joints not being full and stuff like that. And it just depends on what sort of work you're doing. Like this, I didn't have much room to drag the motor back and form a perp joint as effectively. Uh, obviously there is a few holes, etc, etc. And it's a lot of time, you know, me not being perfect. So there's a lot of time where sometimes I just don't sweat it. Some days I'm I'm on it a bit more with pick and dip than the others, but it's all a less effort method for me. And if the joints aren't perfectly full every every time, I try to get them full next course and try to get them on the next one. And the next one and the next one and just try to get a little bit better every day. You're not gonna be perfect every day, and that's why I met these vlogs as the vlog style as they are. Because it just gives like an honest view for the watcher if you know view for you guys watching and uh and it just shows that like, you know gives it's more sort of relatable to more more brit layers and more people than just someone who's like fucking fantastic all the time only posts the best bits of the work only posts the best bits when they're going the fastest like in this video i think i laid like 250 maybe 300 bricks in total probably not even that we're like 250 on this day uh Obviously, given I got broken off a little, a few times in the morning, but you know, I'm always gonna be laying fucking a thousand bricks a day. No one can. It's just, it's not, it's not <laughs> viable to be able to keep up like a super fast pace every day. Like the day I, the day I laid 950, that's my best. The next day I was literally knackered. I was doing a bit of remedials, a bit of day work, and I was absolutely screwed. I was up a ladder doing altering some damp trays and uh i i almost fell off the ladder i was that knackered so you know you can't con you know continuously keep smashing bricks in day after day without you know taking a drop off in speed uh recovery time you know you'll have a day where you might lay 800 and the next day you might be so knackered you might barely scrape a pack of bricks 500 so uh there's there's just you know there's everything to think about uh, this video, obviously, you can see as well, I decided to keep in the part where I jointed up. And just to show you the speed that I joined up at uh, real time, because the last video I did on pointing, I sped everything up, so it didn't really give as true a representation as it, this in real time. Um, when it comes to these nine inch, uh, these, sorry, two brick pillars with a nine inch wall in between, um, the corner sort of joint that joins the pillar to the actual tied in normal wall i was using the smaller of the two big barrels on the amtec but i was a bit lazy sometimes and use the big barrel and the big barrel gives like a really chusty thick drain pipe joint and it's not really don't really look as nice so what i recommend is having like the other barrel uh, the other set of barrels next to you on the other jointer and just use the really uh, the second to smallest barrel it gives a really leaves a really good effect up the joint and almost sort of gives you the individual joints where it joins into the brickwork which looks a lot better i have been guilty of drain piping uh you know internal corner joints and stuff just by laziness to be honest um obviously when it comes to block work it doesn't matter because it's always it's never seen but especially if you're doing a, a garage or something that has uh, visible block work on the uh, face block work on the inside you know, I try to not drain pipe your drain pipe your joints. Try to use a smaller barrel as possible. Even if you're going to drain pipe it, just use, do it like a small drain pipe. Uh, you know, that's what my mate called it years and years ago. Uh, the drain pipe. So I've stuck with using that word. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you can see, same again. You know, all my perps and then doing the beds as I go. Then go stroking back over those over those tops, getting those tops as I go, tail and tops and uh yeah just this is the main part you know especially if i'm on my own i like to take my time my jointing really n try not to miss any holes uh it can just really make your work look 10 times better if there's no gaps anywhere no little you know no little tram lines where you've not quite uh, rubbed the jointer on and once once you've finished you know get a brush off or whatever you're going to use and uh have a look have a check again check there's no uh no little raggy ends or and he's not stuck on the wall that's always a good tip but the biggest thing that has changed the way my brickwork looks in the last uh, day and a half because it's the only only time i've used it 
is I've actually started using the sponge, the sponge method, the uh, sponge method for, uh, for, you know, brushing my brickwork off. So instead of using a brush to, you know, take the sharp edges off, I've been using a sponge, just a normal car sponge, get them from B&M, two for 50p. And uh, the cheapest chips, I, I've, I've got two of them, but I'm, I've got to go and buy some more. You can get them easily from Poundland or B&M or Home Bargains or anywhere like that. Um, Wilco's, anywhere, even being cured or anything like that. Sponge leaves a very, very good effect. Um, I'll probably make a more dedicated video on how to use the sponge effectively, but it's very self-explanatory. Like you're just basically getting the flat side, flat side of the car sponge. Don't use like the heel of it, you know. Don't use like the rim of it. Use a flat side and just rub it all over your brickwork. Um, when it comes to like when to do it, is basically when your mortar is going to, you know a little bit dry you know what i mean you don't want it dusty but you want it like don't want it wet either so if you do it when it's wet you'll have a tend to smudge the joints a little bit as you would do when you were brushing the brickwork wet so sort of just brush it uh, sponge it at the same time you would brushing it um but just go steady i won't say you know really shove the the sponge right into it just give it like a, just a little tickle over the over the top and any areas where it hasn't top and tail just give it an extra rub and you should get a nice smooth finish on the uh, on the perp to bed joining, but um, it doesn't top and tail the bricks as effectively as actually doing it yourself. None of these methods do. Um, you know, brush or or sponge. You'll see me using it right now. Um, the thing that the sponge does, which the brush doesn't, is it gets rid of all your excess. Like my brush just makes everything look a bit. Uh, smooth and takes the sharp edges off but this brush really brushes your uh your your aris of your brick it really it just polishes that aris clean so it really makes the joint stand out a bit more so it's probably not an ideal thing to use the brush if you're not very good at making a nice smooth joint if you wanted everything to sort of if you wanted everything to sort of just like smear into one you're best using a brush but if you you know you've got good joints you've top and tail the sponge really brings your brickwork up tidy so i definitely think it makes a better job than the brush because i've tend to with the brush here i'll brush my brickwork but the bristles won't always knock the gobbo from around the arises especially on these heritage style bricks um they have quite a rough you know the face on these bricks is quite rough so um it has they have quite a bit of sand on them as well so the brush is ideal for just rub you know it's sort of sand it's almost like sand blasting your brickwork when you're rubbing it with the brush with the uh, sponge, should I say. Uh, it does feel a little bit funny at first, but um, when you get used to it, it really makes a good job. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Here's a few pictures as well, and uh, I'll hopefully get some more footage next week after the Man Colony and uh, bring you guys some more videos uh, going over a few slightly variated methods when we build this garage. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.